Hey, welcome to another update on Archmage Rises, Will Sama's favorite game. <laughs> With me, as always, is Bearded Glasses Nick. Hello. Now that people haven't seen you for a month, Nick, they're not getting their Nick fix. That's all right. I, I watched the last upset, update. I think you're better without me. <laughs> Timo did a good job. Yeah, uh, I did. I got to put these on because uh, I had an eye appointment today. And normally when I go for my eye doctor appointments, they're on my... Is it help if I do this? You look so cool. I know. These are my super cool guy glasses. <laughs> like, I wear this at Gen Con. People are like, will you play with me? Because you look so cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, normally I have my eye doctor appointments on Mondays, so that never has interfered with doing these update videos. But um, this one got bounced to Friday because I was out of town and stuff. And... Um, and that leads right into uh, Will Sama's question. Uh, he asked about my health on the Steam forums, and uh, I gave him uh, an answer there, but I actually have more. Okay, I'll take these off, and I will just try to suffer through. So this is my left eye, and uh, it's over-dilated, um, so the brightness of the screen is actually painful, but I will put up with it for the sake of this video update. <laughs> Anyway, so um, earlier this week, um, I went to the hematologist. Um, I'll try to make this short. Um, so for those that don't know, I've had uh, some eye problems since March and um, I lost uh, sight in my left eye. Um, not entirely like a, a retinal detach, but um, blurry enough that it's unusable. And um, so I've been getting eye injections and such and then so, the real question is like, well, why did that even happen to begin with? And um, I did a blood test that showed that I had a lupus antibody, uh, which I hoped would turn me into uh, a werewolf or at least Wolverine, um, but neither of those things are causes uh, that come from that. Um, but it causes your blood to clot and that caused a clot on my retina, which caused my uh, eyesight to go bad. So um, when I went for my uh, blood test and talked to the hematologist back in May um, he said yeah this might just go away so we're gonna watch and wait uh, for uh, for three months and then we'll retest your blood and we'll see and I was like okay so that didn't inspire a lot of confidence but uh, okay fine that's what you're saying then that's what we'll do so now it's August and uh, and I went and I had that appointment and I was kind of nervous because I'm like, hey, maybe I got healed. There's a lot of people praying for me, Nick, a lot. And that means more than two. Um, <laughs> actually, I think it's closer to 100 or something. I'm not sure if numbers matter. But anyway, um, so I'm sitting there. It's the quality, not quantity, Thomas. Is it? Is it? <laughs> I don't know. We'll check. Um, so I'm sitting there in the doctor's waiting office and wondering, like, either he's going to tell me I'm cured or I have a chronic condition and I have to go on blood thinners. Um, and so I went in and he looked at me and he's like, yeah, you're all clear. And so I was like, yay. So as far as root causes go, uh, I am uh, all healed up. Um, so I don't have to worry about it happening again or happening to my right eye, which is really what my major concern was. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was pretty cool. So, um, so that deals with the core issue, but then I still have the um, needles to the eye um, mm -hmm. that inject something in order to get rid of the fluid that's behind my eye that causes the uh, macula to enlarge, which causes me not to be able to see. So I've been getting those injections monthly um, since April, and um, they said I'm supposed to have six, and then we assess and see how things are. And, um, and so because I was out of the country um, twice, uh, in the last uh, little while, um, scheduling whatever, I had my fifth injection set for today. So I went to the doctor's office and they do all this stuff and they test my eye and they scan my retina and all this stuff. And uh, she's like, you know what? There's no fluid back there. And it's been six weeks and, uh, and four days. It's your choice. Um, you know, oh my gosh. It looks really good. So we can do it if you want or we can just not do it and uh, do like a wait and see. Like if, if you get fluid back there, we can like go ahead and do an injection like the next day kind of thing. So uh, I was like, well, okay, let's not do it. Um, because I personally like less needles to the eye than more. You know, like- Who's gonna be like, you know what? 
we better give give me a squirt just in case. Who's gonna say that? <laughs> no, I didn't say that. So, <laughs> um, so yeah. Uh, as it stands now, I don't have uh, any more doctor's appointments. Uh, well, there's a follow up y check on me in four weeks kind of thing, but no more injections and uh, core issue seems to be gone. So it seems to be like all healed up. That's so awesome. And and I'll also tell you something that's like kind of weird, a little bit weird about this. Um, just for my glasses, like for my prescription, my left eye has always been weaker than my right eye. Mm -hmm. And um, so when I started having problems with my left eye, I don't know, it wasn't like I expected that. I certainly did not or whatever. But anyway, my mm -hmm. left eye's always been kind of the weaker of the two. And uh, today when I was in the doctor's office, my left eye is better than my right eye now. Um, so what? my healing has been better than what I, where I started from, I guess. Like she just kept making the text like smaller and smaller and smaller on the thing. And I could read it with my left eye and I eventually couldn't read it with my right eye. Um, wow. So you kind of got like a mini eyeball superpower from all of this. That's what, that's the takeaway. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so there you go. Will Sama and everybody else who's wondering about uh, the health update. Uh, things are real good, free and clear. And uh, most importantly, I can focus on the game. Um, Yay. That means we can get build 11. Well, I mean, let's not go too far here, <laughs> Nick. It just means I'll work on it. <laughs> um, so, thanks for asking uh, there, Will Sema. Now, also, before we get to the game, so I am going to show some of the games, show what I've been working on. Um, you know, I haven't had as much time as I'd like because I was off at Gen Con um, last week. I was at Gen Con, best four days in gaming, largest tabletop gaming uh, con in North America. And it was crazy awesome fun. I had so much fun. Wish you were there, Nick. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, so uh, with two days off for doctor's appointments and going to Gen Con four days, like obviously I didn't have as many working days as I would have liked, but I do have progress to show on the Monster Patrols because that's what this one's about. But first, we're going we're gonna to talk about the fans because they're the whole reason that we're here, Nick. Let's do it. Actually, the only reason you're here is because I invited you. But other than that, I'm here for the fans. Uh, Mark Schwartz less left this uh, on the YouTube video uh, last week. So I think it was last week's uh, YouTube. Uh, he's got this uh, great comment that I, I'd like to share and talk about. So he says, hey, Thomas, I've been following this game for years and have probably watched uh, every video you released a few times. Can you believe that? A few times. Glutton for punishment. I know. So, I mean, this is update number 76. Plus, there's a couple other videos just kind of initially talking about the idea of the game and stuff. And, um, wow. I mean, I, as the creator of these videos, I got to use the 80-20 rule. It's 80% filler and 20% actual good stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so, he's watched them a few times. So, that's amazing. Okay. So, he says, I figure this is probably my last chance to be noticed by you because... As soon as Build 11 is released, I'm sure this YouTube channel and awareness of the game will surge hugely. That's pretty cool. And uh, I I like to agree with him. Um, one of the reasons that I'm working on Build 11 so hard and so long is because I do expect it's going to be like that next step, that like next level thing that it's far less prototypey and far more close to the real game. Mm -hmm. And people will notice that and start sharing it and hopefully journalists pick it up and streamers and, and like, so I'm, I'm kind of expecting that. I mean, I won't be giantly disappointed if nothing comes of it, but, um, but, but that's what I have in my mind. So I think that was cool that he um, already kind of jumped to that conclusion. Anyways, he says, I'm a big fan and so happy to see this game's coming together. Um, I do have a question, kind of not super important, but I'm really curious to know if you can choose your skin color uh, in the game. I know that you don't actually have an avatar, um, but will all of my kids come out white? And is it based off of the AI parent skin color? Um, myself, I am half black and half white. Um, so hopefully it's not like this half black and half white. No. Um, so he's got a good question. Um, so my answer to that is um, we did create um, multiple skin colors when we created the portraits and the portrait generator so you can like see the people. So you'll see black people, brown people, and uh, white people. But what I didn't do was what I should have done, which is actually track race. 
And what I mean by that is like, oh, this person has black skin, this person has brown skin, this person has white skin. So what, it creates a problem when they have kids, and so you have black people having white babies and white people having black babies and stuff because I, because I just didn't consider race because I, I live in Canada and we, we just don't see people that way. People are just people. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, it's like a random number generator, right? You yeah. Pop out. Yeah. Whatever you get. So I'm trying to strive for some realism in this game world, and then I realized, <laughs> wow, that's uh, really unrealistic and totally unexpected. Um, and so I have to go back and program an actual race thing to track the, the skin colors. Yeah. Um, now, to going like to shades of white and shades of black, and I don't think I'm going to do that. Um, I, I haven't worked on it, obviously, but I, I don't think so. I think it's going to be, in that case of a mixed couple, it might just be 50% chance of black, 50% chance of white, maybe. Um, mm -hmm. So anyway, so I need to do that. So for right now, um, you will see uh, most of the faces are white and that just has to do with the number of assets that we have that are done enough in order to include in the game. And then this race stuff will, will be something that I come back to and, and include. So it will definitely be there for the release. It won't be there for build 11. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and obviously if, if a lot of people feel strongly about that, uh, we can all jump on Thomas and say we really need a super realistic uh, skin color baby generator. And uh, I'm sure he'll get right on that. I'll get right on that. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so this guy uh, left a great comment and, uh, and he says that he's watched every video several times. So do you think we should put him in the Fan Hall of Fame? What do you think? Absolutely. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, what are you thinking of course. Yeah. Okay. Okay. If you're gonna let somebody in for just watching everything once, then he's <laughs> gotta be—he's gotta get like two tickets or something. <laughs> two tickets to the fan hall. Okay, so there you go, Mark Schwartz. <clears throat> We're not going to ignore you. You are making it into the fan hall of fame, and and I think when uh, when the floodgates of people start coming in, I think we close the doors to the fan hall of fame because I think it's the early people that deserve it the most. Yeah, for sure. Did you read my comment? Your comment is uh, Timo's awesome and Nick should never be on again. It should just be Timo, Timo, Timo. Hashtag <laughs> Timo rocks. I think that was it your was, comment. I think it was simply Timo rules. Oh, okay. Uh, which is true. I, I enjoyed watching that. I may be a bit of an embellisher. Yeah, that's fine. That's basically <laughs> what I meant. That was the heart of it. <laughs> that's right. Okay. Are you ready to see some game? You ready to see what I'm looking at? Absolutely. Let's see it. Well, okay. Okay, so here we are in the game, in the game world, and uh, I gotta find where the monsters are. Oh, they're down here. Yeah. Okay, so there's monsters here, and I just know that because debugging stuff is on, and um, I'm gonna walk over here. Oh, and uh, okay, it's hard to see, but there's a little goblin guy. Can you see the little? <laughs> I can totally thing. see it. I saw him creeping out of the forest there. Yeah, okay. It's nighttime, so it's actually hard to see. With, uh, clear it up. Okay, so go. You, see, you see him walking around? Okay. Yeah. So now, um, there's a lot of work to get this working. Actually, more work than, than I anticipated. But anyway. Okay, so I'm going to walk here. Okay, so this thing popped up. This debugging thing to tell me. He sees me now. So now, he's... So this is a monster patrol. So what happens is you have layers, and layers recruit monsters um, over time. They like grow and they reproduce and, and stuff. And then eventually, when they get big enough, they'll they'll create another layer, and then that's how they kind of creep across the map. So these are goblins, and um, they created a patrol, and the patrol drill is running around um, doing goblin things on the map. <laughs> so now that I've walked next to him. Um, uh, I've triggered him. I needed that for debugging. So it's triggered. He sees me. And now he's going to follow me around on the map. So if I go here, okay, you see, and he sees me again. And I go here. Now I move faster than he did. So if I do that there. See, he followed like where I went. And uh, I just put this in uh, today. Um, <laughs> if I keep going. Oh, he's still coming. And he stops because there's now uh, a radius distance as to how far he'll travel away from his lair. So I can just stick my tongue out and go, nah, 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 over here. <laughs> um, 
and uh, and I was literally programming this up until the moment when I called Nick to record this video. So <laughs> he's actually just stuck right now um, in an infinite AI loop um, because he doesn't know how to recover for it. But now he's seen me again. Okay, so oh, uh oh, so now I see that goblins have approached, um, and so it says you spot several goblins along the path, and I can see that it's goblins right here. Um, by having some artwork and I have a choice of fight run or stealth and now there's a bunch of things that are going on here um, this is again why it's a systems based game and also one of the reasons why it takes me so long to make this game um, because there's so many things going into this one simple screen so the first thing is I had to detect the collision between his movement and my movement and we're within the same hex now um, and then what it does is an automatic perception check against uh, the goblin to see if I spot him and I did but not enough to tell me how many goblins so you see mm -hmm. it says you spot several goblins along the path um, it says along the path because I detect where it's actually happening in the world and provide information based on that and so it matters time of day matters if it's dark you have less of a chance of seeing and being able to tell what it is and if uh, you're in the forest, there's too many trees in the way, it's hard to tell what things are. So you can sneak around with, with trees. You can use trees cool. on, on the map in order to get around things. Um, okay, so I am going to... Uh, I have a choice. I can either run away or I can be stealthy. Now, I think this... So I was just at Gen Con. I played two role-playing games while I was at Gen Con. One was Starfinder and one was uh, Shadowrun. I had wanted to play both of those and I did. Um, and this is what it's like when you're playing a tabletop game. It's like, okay, you spot some monsters, what do you do? Are you going to fight? Are you going to run? Are you going to do something special? Um, and so I have fight, run, and stealth. And um, I can't cast any spells here, Nick. I can't cast spells. Do you think you should be able to cast spells here? Like to enhance uh, your stealth and your running? Yeah, I think that does sound cool. Yeah, I think so too. Um... I don't think that the turns are going so fast at this point that mm -hmm. I would be locked out of being able to cast a spell. So I think I should be able to cast invisibility at this point and be able to like stealth my way around. Oh yeah, um, so, I like that a lot. <clears throat> so you see here that I'm getting a plus four cover of darkness uh, to my stealth because it's nighttime. So I'm going to, uh, I'll try the stealth. Ooh, I like that, that's really cool. That's new, I haven't seen that. Hey, I've been working on this game a lot. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's new to me. I like it. Okay, well, I got a success. Um, so my stealth skill of one, I have the, the modifier is actually a thing that allowed me to get over because my roll was seven, and I got mm -hmm. a result of 11, so I stealthed. So I successfully avoided detection by the goblin. So now I have a choice. I could just leave, or I can fight. And if I fight, I get a first round of surprise. Isn't that cool? That's awesome, yeah. So that gives you two rounds, essentially? Or... Yeah, that's right. So it gives you two rounds. Um, so I'm going to choose leave. Okay, so now we're in the same hex, and I haven't put it in yet, but basically the uh, goblin's going to spend a few hours, like, looking for you, right? Because he <laughs> knows, like, hey, you're here, right? And he's going to, like, look for you. So um, <laughs> that allows you to, like, walk away. But uh, because I haven't quite put that in yet. Oh, uh, there's another goblin coming. Yes, there is. He's getting sandwiched. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, no. There's so that reinforcements. Here, yeah, that's right. I told you they recruit. Um, so it says you spot a goblin through the long grass and you fail to tell if there are any more. That's because I, I actually failed to roll um, in that, so it doesn't tell me anymore. So I'm going to run and I'm going to bump up my stuff because I, I want to run. So Cheater! Yeah, I cheated. Okay. Holy crap, 43. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, <laughs> so I ran away. Now, if I go over here... So... Here, there were actually two patrols there, so it just triggered on one of them. Now, because mm -hmm. my perception um, skill is so high, it says you spot one goblin. It tells me the exact number of goblins, and it tells me what's there. You can make oh, a, that's cool. a cutter. And so the higher you score on your roll for perception, the more it will tell you. So say you see a cutter and some other stuff. But if you mm -hmm. score higher, it'll say you see a cutter and a warrior and a vexer. Like, it'll just keep going based on how high it is. Do you like that? Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so now we can go into the fight. And so here is the actual fight. Cutters are kind of nasty. Oh, no, they're not. No, these are the little tiny guys. 
and blast um, and now I can blast him. There. Oh, that was easy. Yeah, I got him. Yeah. <laughs> He's not very hard. Okay, so that is uh, how monster patrols work. And uh, it was more work than I thought it was going to be, but they really are working and moving around the map, being um, recruited, sticking within their distance of the lair. Uh, do you have any questions, Nick? No, I think that's cool. Um, one comment was I think before it was more of like a radius, right? Um, like yeah. it was still pulling the characters in, but now that they're actually on the map, I think that's really cool. I don't know. I just really like seeing little dudes running around chasing you for some reason. Me too. And yeah. um, I don't know if this will really be a valid thing in the final game. But right now, if um, if the goblin's going towards a town or going towards um, somebody that's working and the hex is outside the town, mm -hmm. and you're there, he'll go for you. So you can actually lead him away from the town and then have mm -hmm. a, fi a fight. Okay. Or you could, yeah, or maybe you could lead him in so they could just... <laughs> attack you the town yeah I guess so yeah he will follow you um, again that would be AI logic as to whether he's actually right. run all the way to a town mm -hmm. um, but yeah so look I snuck all the way around him okay anyway so that's what I have to show right now um, going a little slower than I thought but still going and I'm still working on the dynamic quests and stuff and being able to wipe out these um, goblin lairs nice it looks great Okay, well thanks Nick for being here, and uh, now we'll say goodbye everybody. Bye!